One of the um, things I like to collect, mortar and pestles, and if, um, if you get a chance today, wander up towards the far bathroom, you'll see my little display of uh, my historical medicinal things that I've gathered over the years from all around the world. Um, it's lots of fun, it's a nice hobby, and I like collecting old med uh, medicine books as well. So this is a lovely mortar and pestle actually that uh, my eldest daughter Erica bought me, and she's also um, senior vice president here. Yes, yeah, so this is a wonderful mortar and pestle. So basically what I'm doing here, I am crushing the herbs to release more of their fragrance, but also I want to get a reasonably consistent um, size of herbs so the scrub is feel it feels better when the, there's more um, consistency in the in the botanicals. You've looked into the bags you know how whole they are so basically I'm crushing it down and so we're getting a nice uh, uniform. Oh and it smells great. I'll pass this around when I finish but so using a mortar and pestle, you're really just, um, you know, going around the bowl, crushing uh, the herb against the bottom of this. Um, I like using a mortar and pestle rather than putting it into a blender, which of course you can do also if you're really wanting to make it much more powdered. But um, this is just a nice way of uh, controlling your final product. So you can see now that uh, we've got a nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass this around so you can see our final. Might I ask where this wonderful gift from your daughter is? Was that that was not made here in this country? Do you know? No, I think she got it out of Europe. Yeah. I think she family. got it from uh, through eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, isn't that beautiful? I know. I'm I'm a spoilt mom. So we're gonna once we've passed that around, we're gonna add that to the sugar, and then we're gonna add our oil and glycerin. Um, Sweet almond oil is just a nice neutral oil to use. There's lots of different oils that you can uh, use in your products and each one's going to be slightly different. And Anne, I'm sure you're familiar. Anne's a massage yeah. therapist locally. And you, what is your favorite oil for massage therapy? Um, you mean for the skin itself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. is the closest to the skin. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice um, oil, a blend. I usually like a favorite blend. Sometimes it has mm -hmm. flaxseed oil. Mm. Um, almond is the most commonly mm -hmm. used, probably. Or, you know, so the just groups. depends, yeah. right? I love jojoba too, and I also love camellia, camellia oil. I just, oh, I just love camellia oil. Camellia oil is an oil that just like soaks right into your skin, and yet it leaves it feeling really hydrated. Because sometimes, you know, oil on your skin is, I know, it's kind of a little annoying. It's too oily, or you know, it gets in your hair, or you can't really slather oil on and put your clothes on, you know, that kind of thing. Camellia oil is just, oh, it's gorgeous. It just sinks right in. Have we got a tester there? We could pass around with the camellia just so people could try it. It's really a lovely oil. And as Anne said, jojoba is lovely because it's the closest oil to your skin. So again, uh, I like to blend camellia and jojoba. Um, and if I want to lighten it up even more, I'll add some of this. But the most important thing is with a base oil is that it is not oxidized. And here's where your olfactory system really comes into it, because you can smell an oxidized base oil really clearly. I mean, it smells off. So it's important to always shop with your nose. Um, you know, or, and really start smelling lots of different things. So you really train your nose to smell that oxidized product. A lot of essential oils will oxidize too. The citrus oils, they oxidize. So, you know, always smell the tester, smell your oils, and make sure that you're getting um, the, a fresh product. Isn't that nice? Mm. So here we go. We're gonna add this to our sugar. See, it's just like, just like cooking, right? Give that a good stir. So whose body are you going to slather that on today? 
<laughs> I know. Are you volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that kind of video. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We might we might get more hits on uh, YouTube if it was right. <laughs> so let's see. We are going to add two ounces, and this is two ounces of um, our sweet almond oil. So let's see how this. Um, I would want to use it up probably, I would say, within a couple of months. I wouldn't want to keep it any longer than that. Um, and you'll probably find that you won't keep it longer than that because you just want to use it. Um, I mean, body scrub is probably something that, you know, you don't want to do every day. Probably just, you know, like three times a week would be just fine. Um, it certainly sloughs off the dead skin and hydrates at the same time, which is really nice, particularly in winter. So, oh, that's, oh, that's smelling good. Okay, so now we're going to put our vegetable glycerin in. And this is, f we're going to use one tablespoon. I know you're probably going to talk about the glycerin. That's a new thing to me, and I'm wondering, is it more about, what, what effect does it have? Well, vegetable glycerin is a coconut, uh, oh, coconut oil product. Um, you can get glycerin that's not sourced, not plant-based. So just be careful, it's a vegetable glycerin. Um, it, uh, it's a humectant, it's going to attract moisture to the skin and, and hold it in to the skin. So again, it's just going to add some uh, intensity to the moisturizing uh, aspect of the... And sugar itself too is an interesting product. It's a lot of scrubs are made with salt, but salt is very drying, whereas sugar is very uh, moisturizing, which is why uh, using salt, uh, yes, using sugar is my preference rather than salt. Now we're going to use our essential oils. All right, our recipe says use it within a month. Use it within a month. So, if you didn't have the herbs in there, then it probably would keep longer. Um, possibly, although even though the sweet almond oil is a cold pressed oil, which means that it does have a lot of the um, natural antioxidants in it, that it's going to preserve it. Oil does have a shelf life. Um, and usually you want to store it somewhere quite cool because oil will oxidize. So, um, but isn't sugar kind of preserved too? Uh, I don't believe sugar would preserve the oil so adequately. Um, Possibly it would to some extent. That, that would be an interesting experiment. I mean, you know, you could keep some on the shelf for six months and see how it smelled. I, I think it's just a product that you're going to use anyway. So um, we're going to pass this around so you can smell the... I have a question. What's the shelf life for um, jojoba and jojoba? The shelf life of jo jojoba? Usually I say, this is chamomile, if you want to pass that around. Usually I say with base oils, um, three to six months, a little longer if you keep them in the fridge. Mm -hmm. 